Welcome back to Squawk. Shares of General Motors slightly higher at the moment. Let's show you what's going on. Uh, right now, about at 1% up. The company uh, reported mixed uh, fourth quarter results just uh, this hour. When it gets to our Phil Lebeau, he's at the New York Stock Exchange, and he's got a very special guest to help break some of those numbers down for us, Phil. Hi, Andrew. I am here with Divya Surya Devara, the CFO of General Motors. Uh, you guys just posted fourth quarter earnings where you beat the street on the bottom line. Revenue, just a tad light of what expectations were. But when you look at the fourth quarter, this was a challenging one because you had the UAW strike impact. Right. That's right, Phil. Actually, if you look at the whole calendar year, we think it was a very strong year from a core operating performance perspective. We had $4.82 of EPS, but when you adjusted for the strike, the underlying performance was close to $6.71, which is at the higher end of the range in terms of what we guided to as well. Uh, cash flow was very strong. Um, we generated about $6.5 billion when you cut through the impact of the strike. So overall, strong year, despite the volatility we're seeing around the globe, um, and North America performance exceptionally strong as well on the back of the strong launches we've had, particularly on the pickups. So a good calendar year, and it sets, up, it sets us up well going into 2020. And 2020 for you guys should be a clean year. You don't have the UAW uh, contract to come <laughs> up. You look like you have right-sized your capacity in North America with the plant closings over the last year and a half, and you're looking at a relatively fairly strong market still in, in North America. Yeah, it's 2020, we expect to be another strong year and clean year, as you, as you put it. Um, we're expecting about flat EPS when you adjust for non-operating items, and um, we're doing that despite a softer U.S. industry. We're expecting about half a million units down in the U.S. Uh, we're expecting China to continue to be down, as well as um, uh, markets in uh, South America. And I think the, the, it's a differentiator when you think about it, where you're able to maintain earnings in an environment where uh, it's volatile around the globe. So we're excited about 2020. We have some uh, launches coming up. We had the Cadillac Escalade revealed right. yesterday. And, and we, we talked to Steve Carlisle, mm -hmm. the president of Cadillac, yeah. yesterday. China is critical to Cadillac. It's critical for General Motors. It is your largest market. The coronavirus, it's a, it appears to be a jump ball. You've already shut down your plant for the holiday, and that's extended out uh, a few extra days. What type of long-term, at least Q1 impact, do you expect from coronavirus in China? As you say, it's a fluid situation, and um, what we're focused on now is the safety of our employees, and we're concerned for everyone who's impacted. And as you think about the business impact of it, there's the uh, impact on demand that we're looking at, as well as the global supply chain. And how much is that impact on demand? I think it's too early to, to say, Phil. And uh, we're obviously um, closely monitoring the situation. We've activated contingency plans, and we're looking at mitigating the best way possible the impact of this. But at this stage, it's just too early to say. If you look back at General Motors over the last three to four years, these are perhaps the three or four most profitable years ever for General Motors. And yet, when you look at your stock, it's done nothing. It's actually lower compared to where it was four years ago. This at a time where shares of Tesla have taken off. And I'm not going to ask you to comment on another uh, company's stock price, but is there frustration for the GM leadership team that you are posting the numbers you're posting and yet investors have basically said, we could care less? Well, we believe we're a compelling investment opportunity. And um, we look at our businesses multiple ways. We have highly successful cash generative businesses that are growing and we're also very uniquely positioned in the growth areas whether but, it's but let's EVs talk about the growth areas. ADs, and we think that we're bullish on our future and it, the reward will come do you have to become more aggressive in terms of electric vehicles yes we you have the electric hummer coming and you've got a slew of vehicles that you're going to be coming out as uh, electric models as you know, as you're building these and yet when people talk about electric vehicles I rarely hear them say General Motors is the growth company. I think you're going to hear us talk about it a lot more as we go forward as well. We're all in on EVs. And um, if you look at the progress we're making, whether it's starting with Hummer and all the vehicles we're going to roll out in the next several years, we're excited about it because we're uniquely positioned. We have one architecture that's highly scalable. And when you look at our presence around the globe, it puts us in a unique uh, position to have every segment and every brand represented from an EV standpoint. Look at the investments we've made in the Detroit Hamtramck plant, sure. in the LG joint venture. So this shows our commitment, and it's something we're very excited about. We're going to talk more about it. When do you see the sales accelerate? We see it accelerating, you know, as we roll out our new products. We're going to see that You expect to see strong growth, let's say, starting next year when you come out with the Hummer and then some of the other electric vehicles. We think with our, with our new products, we are going to see growth in volume.